Stop submitting basic tickets through your chatbot. With the rise of AI, customers are now expecting more tailored experiences and faster resolutions. So they're expecting you to do the hard work for them. Hi, I'm Bart and I'm a voice flow community expert. You might remember me from Support Launchpad, my YouTube channel, and you may have seen my Zendesk Marketplace app, Zenflow, which lets you connect your voice flow agents into the Zendesk agent workspace. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create this better ticket submission process. So let's demo that process now. Okay, let's put our name, let's import an email. And let's say now I have a question. What's it about? It's a better product that I'm looking to buy. Okay, what's your question? I want to buy a computer. Can you please let me know what specific requirement or features you're looking for in a computer? I am looking for a fast computer for gaming that also doesn't break the bank. And we can see a ticket was created with the ticket ID 41. Let's jump across into my Zendesk and let's see how that ticket was delivered. And this is a template that I use for my own customer support team. It's an internal note and it gives the agent full context about what's going on. We have answered the customer's question. So that's the action required. We have the original question from the customer. Then we use an AI prompt to dig it a little bit deeper to essentially get some more information. And now we have the additional context from the customer. Let me explain. So I've got two examples of a ticket submission process. On the top, a basic submission process and on the bottom, a better ticket submission process. The basic process collects the name email and a general message from the customer. We're essentially leaving it up to the customer to guess what information they have to give us. Because of this, it slows down your agent. Your agent now uses that first reply to request more information from the customer. Your customer is waiting longer for resolution. And finally, you miss out on Zendesk automation. So if you're just accepting general messages, you don't have context, you can't apply tags, and therefore you can't use triggers and automation. Now the better ticket submission process collects a name and an email, but it removes the guesswork by using dynamic fields that are tailored to specific requests. What this means is we have a high level category with the main buckets of contact. So let's say we go down to auto management. Then from here, we have subcategories from that bigger category, just pinning down our detail into more nuanced topics. Let's choose track my order. And then I'm prompted to input the order number and then my issue with the order. So compared to the top session, if I had an issue with my order, I might be like, I have an issue with my order. And as a customer, this is enough for me because I'm thinking, what's the quickest and easiest way I can complete this form compared to here, where now you're prompted to put an order number in and then an issue. So if your agent wants to receive a ticket with this kind of context, order management, track my order, here's the order number, and I only receive product A, but not product B. This gives your agent full context so they can solve the ticket within that first reply. It's faster for customers because they're only waiting for one response and then they have a resolution. So you can actually apply custom tags to these uh, categories and subcategories and then flip them across to Zendesk and then you can use all of Zendesk automation. Okay, so let's jump to the voice flow canvas and build out a better ticket submission process. So let's create a new assistant. Let's call this submit a ticket. We'll choose chat and we'll choose English and then create assistant. We can go ahead and wipe all this clean. We don't need that right now. And the first thing we're gonna do is introduce a text step, which essentially just let the customer know we're gonna be submitting a ticket on their behalf. So just like introducing the flow. Then we want to collect the customer's name. So what is your name? And we'll save this to a capture step. And we'll call this customer name, create variable, create variable. Next, we want to collect the customer's email address. So let's go to text. What is your email address? Same thing, capture step. But this time we're actually gonna create a new entity and I'm gonna call this customer email. Now we're doing this because we can select the data type as email and this means that if the customer doesn't put in an email, it's not gonna be accepted into the system. Now the next thing we wanna do is going back to our high level categories. So we had general question, order management, product support, returns and refunds. We wanna build out a similar approach here. So we're gonna create a block here and say, thanks customer name, which option best describes your query. Now I'm gonna be using some buttons and essentially these buttons are gonna form my initial category here, but I wanna make them a little bit more conversational. So I have a question, help with an order, issue with a product, return my order. And we're also going to attach an action here. So we're gonna set a variable. We're gonna call this variable ticket category, create a new variable ticket category, and we're gonna call this general question. Do the same for all these, return in order. So essentially us setting these variables, you can see that later on, we're going to be putting them into the Zendesk API call, but these are the high level categories for our ticket. And we can use these to set up triggers and automations in Zendesk. So then from here, we're going to be building out these subcategory, just like what you saw here. As soon as you choose something like general question, then you have some options, product question, shipping info, warranty info. Let's go ahead and build out these as well. Let's go to talk step and say, what is your question? And just as before, now we're building out the subcategories of each category. So we're going to use buttons, product information, shipping 
moving information, warranty information. And just like before, we had the high level ticket category tagged as ticket category. We're going to do the same thing. And we're going to say ticket subcategory. Actions, set variable, create a new variable called ticket subcategory, create a new variable. Yep. And then we're just going to say product information. Same thing for this. So I'm going to go ahead and build out all of our subcategories for each category now. Okay, I want to highlight something. As you can see, I'm assigning a value to a variable and I'm not putting a space between these two words. And that's because Zendesk tags don't use spaces. So you have to use an underscore or a dash and there's no spaces allowed. Make sure that all your values are using this underscore method. Okay, so I built out all my categories then my subcategories, which are effectively buttons that the customer presses. And I've also built out my ticket category tags and my ticket subcategory tags. And the next thing that I want to do is build out my priority tags on the subcategory level. But let's say, for example, the customer chooses issue with the product. If we set priority here, our issue with the product has options of replacement support, troubleshooting help, or not working. Sorry, replacement parts. So replacement parts doesn't need a high priority tag. Troubleshooting might need a high priority tag. Not working might need an urgent tag. So as you can see, if we set a priority here, it's not really going to be appropriate for all of our options. That's why we're setting the priority at the subcategory stage. Let's start setting our priorities. So I'm going to go ticket priority, create a new variable, create. And for this, I'm just going to say normal. If you want to find out what priorities you have available, go into a Zendesk ticket, click on your drop down, and you can see low, normal, high, and urgent. These are all going to be lowercase when you put them as tags. Okay, so I'm going to keep going through and setting priorities for all these tickets. So I've gone ahead and added the ticket subcategories and then ticket priorities to all the subcategory options. And the next thing that I want to do is, just like before when we chose order management and track my order, we had two extra text inputs. What is your order number and what is your order issue? Now I'm going to be creating two text inputs for each of these subcategories to obtain some more information from the customer. Okay, so let's build out the first one together. I'm going to go for text. I'm going to say thanks. I'm going to call the username again, custom name. What is your question? And here we're going to go and collect capture step. We're going to call this customer question, create a new variable. Now the ask a question block is unique to the other blocks because these blocks are going to have two sets of static inputs. I'm going to ask the customer for specific information and then they're going to respond with that specific information into the input. Before general product questions, shipping information, warranty info, this is a bit more dynamic and to tailor our process for the customer. I'm just going to use an AI step here. I'm going to go set AI and based on what the customer inputs here, I'm going to create a clarifying question that I can ask the customer to obtain more context. And that's what we had in our example here, where I said I'm looking to buy a computer. And then this is an AI step, which essentially asks some clarifying information based on my input here. And then that's how I got the additional context. So to create this step, I'm going to call this create clarifying question. And for my prompt, I'm going to say based on the customer's question. And we used over here a customer question. Ask the customer a clarifying question that will assist in obtaining further context that an agent can use to solve the request. Then I'm going to create a new variable and I want to call this additional question, create a new variable. I'm saving whatever the AI is generating as an additional question into this variable. I'm going to go a little bit deeper and set some more prompts. This is the prompt that I'm going to use. So you can pause the video here or it's going to be in a template anyway. Now I'm going to ask the customer that question. So we just saved it as additional question. And then we're going to capture the additional context from the customer. And the customer additional context, create variable. Now I'm just going to plug in the rest of these subcategories into this exact same flow. So from here, you can go even more tailored and build out separate questions for each of these subcategories if you want, but I'm happy enough just to plug in all these into these two questions here. Okay, so I'm gonna build out the rest of these flows. Now I have all of my additional questions built out. Each subcategory plugs into a set of two questions. This was the most dynamic step where we're using AI to generate a clarifying question and then ask that to the customer. Whereas all of these flows, and again, this is where your expertise comes into this. Since you know what information you need to solve each query, this is where you would ask that specific information. The next thing that we need to do is submit this ticket into Zendesk. So I'm gonna to go to an API API step. Let's quickly look at some Zendesk documentation. If we want to create a ticket in Zendesk, let's scroll down to here and click on Node.js. This is the configuration that we need to use for our API step. So we need to use a post request. We have our URL here. We have our headers, content type, and authorization. So let's just start building out our API call. So we're going to go to post, take this URL. So example here is actually just your domain. Okay, let's plug in the domain. Next, let's go for the headers. So let's go back here, copy content type application JSON. And now for our authorization, we can see that we need to do basic and then the authorization value. We can see that we need to base64 encoding. We're going to be using our API token for authorization. And this is the format that we need to follow. So you could just go on Google and type in base64 encoder. I'm just going to input my email and then I need to get my API token. So going back into Zendesk, 
admin center. I'm going to type in API, Zendesk API. I need to make sure that for token access, I have this enabled. I'm going to click add API token. I call this new token, copy this, say this, go back to my base64 encoder. I'm going to paste this here, click encode. I'm going to capture this value and paste it here. Now, the next thing that we want to do is build out what we're going to be sending to Zendesk. So I'm going to go to body, click raw, and you can see that we already have a format here of how to structure our actual raw body. Okay, here's one that I prepared earlier. So I just pulled up an online HTML viewer. So what we're doing with this, we're actually using HTML body. Going back into the documentation, we can see that we can either use body, which is just plain text format or HTML body. So HTML body is what allows us to create an internal note with this kind of formatting. And essentially this is the entire message that's contained within the HTML body. Let's just get rid of this stuff that we don't need. And this is exactly what we get in our ticket, same kind of format. So to edit this, you can either just paste this into chat GPT and ask it to make certain changes for you. But really it's not too difficult. All you need to do is look for specific tags that I've used in here and then match up these tags to whatever you're using in your earlier flow. As you can see, I've got customer question, customer additional context and additional question here. So I've got customer question, additional question, customer additional context here. Also on the bottom of this, you can see that I've added some extra tags. I've got ticket category, my ticket subcategory. So those are the two buttons that were getting the customer to select. I've got a chat feedback tag, which I'll speak about at the end of this video. And then you can see here the requester, I put name, customer name, email, customer email, subject, it's a chat support ticket and customer name has a question. And then I've set my ticket priority. And this last system message here, it's gonna be a little bit clearer here, is basically me trying to get feedback from my agent saying, hey, for this request type, what kind of information do you need to see that you're not seeing here that we can give you so you can solve this ticket in one response. Going back to our voice flow build, let's test this out. I've set some random variables to generate. So this was a success. Let's go into our inbox and find that ticket. Here we go, chat support ticket. And then with my custom variables that I just put in, the last thing that I wanna do is save the ID of this ticket. So the same idea that we have here, ticket number 42. I wanna save that and I wanna give it back to the customer to let them know, hey, the process is complete and here is your ticket number. So to access that, I'm gonna access the entire response first. Then I'm gonna access the ticket object and the ticket value. I'm gonna save this to ticket ID, create new variable. Now from here, after a successful call, I'm gonna have my closing off message. So I'm going to say perfect customer name and I'm going to get another text just so it looks a little bit neater. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this API call for each of the ticket categories. Plug them in. Like I mentioned before, all you need to do is copy and paste this raw body into a HTML viewer and then just go through and edit it. So for example, some of the things you would change here are subject. So if we're looking at the modify an order, for example, from the help with an order, you might just say chat support ticket it needs help with an order. You might change the structure of this. Instead of goal one reply solve, you might have have specific information here like contact our 3PL, make sure you follow this process and make sure you do X, Y, and Z. And yeah, you would just go through and change all these things to fit your needs. From here, I'm just gonna plug all these into my final message. And the last thing that I need to do is create a fallback in case something fails here. So if my API call fails, I'm gonna have a fallback message that says, and then the fallback could just be sending to your email address or you might have a contact us form on your support page. So you can just direct a customer there. As you can see here, since we have all these API blocks going into one final block, it gets a little bit messy. So I'm gonna choose go to block and type in error and go error fallback. Okay, so that's the entire build. We can see that initially we capture the customer's name, their email address, we let them select a category. So then we can funnel them down into more specific set of subcategories so that we can apply some finer detailed tags and and some priorities to the ticket. And also we can ask specific questions based on their request. Finally, we make the API call and then we close up the ticket. Let's give this a run and see how it goes. What's your name? Okay, what's your email? Cool, we're going good. Yep, I have a question, product information. I want to get a bike to ride in the mountains. So you can see that we can still optimize this AI step here, depending on what your specific products are. Since this is a general build, the question is pretty general, but I could tailor the AI depending on whatever products you have. The final thing that I wanna show you guys is one potential way that you can use tags in Zendesk to trigger off automation. As you can see here, I have a chat feedback tag that I send in all of my API calls. I've used that chat feedback tag to identify tickets that were submitted through my chat box and then I send those customers a questionnaire asking them, hey, hope you had a nice experience with the chatbot. Can you give me some feedback on how I can improve it? This is one way that you can improve your chatbot by asking your customers for their feedback. Okay, guys, thanks for watching the tutorial. And there you have it, a better ticket submission for your chatbot. Guys, feel free to download the template, join the VoiceFlow Discord, and if you haven't already, check out Zenflow in a Zendesk marketplace. All right, see ya.